So I have a Vessel 17PW15-9 power board in today. And the issue it's having is it's having a lot of intermittent power issues, so it's shut off in use. And um, I found that there's just a whole bunch of cold solder joints on this power supply. I mean, look at the primary calf. Uh, this 5 volt IC here as well, those leads are all broken. And this Gnux on capacitor, which solders in there, literally just pulled off the board. Yeah, it's an older supply. It's out of this Hitachi. There's the model number. And it uses a 17 PW15 motherboard. And as you can see, Vessel decided to solder on the ballast capacitor for the just after the switching section onto the bottom side of the board. And whenever I repair one of these or a 17PW20 or 17PW16 I always replace these two capacitors at the back because they're problematic um, unfortunately I've run out and I've got a batch in coming off eBay but that could take a few weeks to get here but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to recap this whole thing here's all the caps um, I haven't got the primary unit in, that's coming off eBay and I haven't got those two, they're coming in off eBay as well. And I'm going to replace all the thermal paste on the heat sinks. And I'm going to take things off like the transformers and just clean this board up because it's got a lot of tobacco ash on it. And it's it smells as well. <laughs> and basically just needs a restoration. So I'm just going to show you how I restore TV boards. I am working on a 17PW20 at the minute, I'll show that at the end. That isn't finished yet either, but you get the general idea. I don't think I've ever shown my new, well, new soldering station before. Well, it's not new, it's, I've had it for about a month or two now. This is a Duratool ZD915 uh, desoldering station, and it works nicely. Has a, a, just a cheap gun, you know, I've made the seal better on that. I uh, got a 1.3 millimeter tip in, and it can go up to 480 degrees. It uses 80 watts, and it's been an excellent gun. Um, haven't been able to fault it yet. Um, it comes with a little tray there, and here's the soldering iron I'm using. It's this is actually a brand new one. Um, I bought this from eBay for 9.99. It's a Nikai, 40 watt soldering iron. Uh, these are sold in Maplin as well for 24.99. So Maplin are obviously making a lot of profit off these. Uh, but the, I used to have one of these, and I threw it away because it wasn't. It, was, it still worked, but the screws that hold the tip in they had failed, and it kept falling out and melting all my carpet. So I got a brand new one. Had that for I got these two at the same time, so these are both a month old. And I'm in a different room today because I don't have enough room in mine. Um, my norm, the place that I normally do work out, which is at a different house, um, I haven't got room in that place either. So I'll work on this and hopefully get this TV sorted at last. Anyway, I'm gonna heat all the equipment up. And I'll show you decapping all this. Well, I won't show you it, I'll just decap it and show you. Take off the transformers and the heat sinks, and yeah, you get the idea. That's how clean the soldering gun gets the solder points. I'll show you this rectifier here. Basically clean. 
got it running at 400 degrees. This is an excellent station. That's taken less than five minutes. Whereas with this and the soldering gun, it would have taken longer and there would have been a lot more mess everywhere. It's great. <laughs> and literally, just lifts off the board. Excellent. I'm put that somewhere safe up there. That's safe enough. I'm going to start desoldering this, the PFC, and everything that I'm going to clean up. So here's what I've done so far. I've completely desoldered everything. Well, almost everything. So the transformer, the ballast caps, the transistors, all the well, all almost all of the ele electrolytic capacitors and some of the input filtering is it needs cleaning this board just needs cleaning and getting that smoke smell off it here's all the parts on these I'm gonna hoover, like clean them off with IPA and replace the thermal paste and the transformer just needs a wipe just basically to neaten this make this thing smell nicer basically and upgrade it and just make it last longer as well because these caps and the the electrolytics are normally the first thing to go on these boards. Um, so this is a 17 PW20, which is the uh, I don't know daughter of this board, the 17 PW15, and this they're basically built the same. Uh, yeah, Got the wire stuck. Um, but they're basically built the same. Um, there's not much difference in them, really. I mean, I'll compare them afterwards. But on this one, I've replaced all the thermal paste on the heat sinks, cleaned up the board. Um, I'm halfway through replacing the capacitors. Um, I'm just waiting for the main primary unit and the some more of the two ballasting caps and the 4700 units I'm waiting for them to come in as well and as you can see on the solder side this looks loads better than this because I've removed all the crappy flux Vessel's absolute cheap flux job but this board um, when I replace everything on it, it should be good for a, a while. Um, caps I'm using United you know, like Chemicon, Jamicon, uh, for, and a Rubicon down there. For this board, I'm using the same uh, Rubicon, Chemicon, Samoa, and Jamicon. Um, not the best brands, some of them ain't. Well, the Rubicons and the Chemicons are. Samos and Jammies ain't, but they they'll last, you know. They'll outlast the board at least. I'm just gonna desolder the primary unit here and desolder this and clean everything off. And yeah, I'll get back to you when this board is clean. So here's the board after I've cleaned it. It looks immaculate now. I used IPA and water to wash the IPA off and don't worry I've dried it with a air compressor everything looks great on here now wiped off all that gunk um, uh, the new capacitor isn't going to be here for about three weeks and I'm not waiting that long to restore this uh, these two shouldn't be that long so um, I just went in my cat box and got one of these. So yeah, Chemicon KMG 220 microfarad 450 volt. That'll fit in there fine. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I think it will. It doesn't matter anyway. If not, I'll just have to wait. But um, now I'm gonna clean the heat sinks off, and I'm gonna start rebuilding this power supply. And it should turn out really nice after the rebuild. I got all the new capacitors on. And this board looks great now. 
just still got to clean up all that and I can build this and test it um, uh, as you can see on the main filter capacitor but I gave up trying to use that crappy little mount there um, so I just made one out of some through hole leads and just soldered it on and glued the cap down and all the other caps went on fine so yeah it's going good um, I'm going to clean the heat sinks off now and then I'm going to finally reseal this going well. So here is the finished board after it's been restored. So as you can see it looks a whole load nicer now. Um, so I'll show you what I've done. So the first thing I've done is replaced all the capacitors. Here I have two Panasonics, a Rubicon and a Jamicon. Primary unit is a Nippon Chemicon 220 microfarad 450 volt. Here are four Ruby, uh, actually six Rubicons, three Jamicons, and a Samwa. There's a Panasonic, two Samwas, a Chemicon, two Jamicons, another Jamicon, a Rubicon, and a Panasonic. Uh, so that's the caps that I've got on. Uh, I've replaced all the thermal paste on all the devices, as you can see. They've all got fresh paste on. And there's Jamic on there as well. I've cleaned up the board, washed off all the smoker's dust. And I've also done a lot of work to the soldering, because the soldering on this was crap. So I've pretty much desoldered everything, resoldered it all. There's a look at the rectifier now. The main filter cap now. The transformer. The output diodes. Now that is quality soldering, if I don't say so myself. But this is all now properly restored. And I've got to wait for these crappy capacitors to come in off eBay uh, but when they do I'll replace them and then I'll ship off the TV um, it's good to replace those two at the top because they are prone to going bad so basically all that I've got to do is replace them two caps and by well, the time you'll see this video, th this board will be in the TV, and the TV would have been sold. So I'm going to put it in the TV now and test it. So, here's a 17PW that I'm currently restoring. I replaced all the thermal paste on that. And I've just got to recap it and replace them, I've already said. But I'm going to put this in the TV, and I'm going to see whether or not it blows up or not. <laughs> It shouldn't do because I've restored lots of these boards and never had a problem. So here's the power supply installed, all restored, and excellent condition now the power supply is. The motherboard is a 17MB15E-1, there's the amp, I'm going to replace them caps. Um, but the good news is the power supply works. The bastard here is the screen is broke, and I wasn't able to tell that the screen was broke. Backlights are all on and running. Um, and there we are. It's not smashed on the outside, but on the inside of the LCD, it's completely cracked. Um, so I'm going to have to buy a new LCD which is about £50 and this piece of junk can only make about 80 so <sighs> I cussed a lot but at least the power supply is um, restored um, 
spent about uh, five quids in parts because when I buy capacitors I buy bulk lots um, so the Rubicons I got for about a, like three quid for like a pack of twenty so I haven't spent much on it already I only spent ten pounds to, to buy the TV so I guess I could make my money back if I buy a new screen but it's just a piece Flipping nightmare that is. But hey, um, showing how I restore these seventeen PW power supplies. Um, just recap them and. Replace the thermal paste basically and tidy up the solder joints because the solder joints are crap. Absolute crap solder joints. But um, thanks for watching and that's how I restore these power supplies basically.